Hello, welcome to this second video looking at derivative formulas, shortcuts to being able to calculate the derivative. Um, in the previous video, we laid out all the different formulas, the power rule, the, the difference rule, the sum rule, the quotient rule, the proc rule, the constant um, function rule, the, the constant multiple rule. We laid them all out. So now let's attack some problems with these rules without having to worry about the definition of the derivative. Um, in, in a previous uh, video, we calculated the derivative of 3x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. And we had a formula for it. Uh, um, and so we, we evaluated it at 1. We, we took the derivative at 1, and we found out that it was um, negative a half. So that was already done. If you want to see it, I'll put the link in the description below, or at the end of the video, I'll put a, um, a link to go back to that video. But yeah, negative 1 half. All right, so we have to find the equation of the tangent line. Well, we have the slope of the tangent line. How do we get the equation of the tangent line? Well, we have a point, the point of tangency when x is 1. We find out that y is 2. So we take that point <coughs> and we plug it into the standard y equals mx plus b. The x is 1, the y is 2, the m is negative 1 half. We just need the b. So 2 should be equal to negative a half times 1 plus a b. Add the half over to the other side. 2 plus a half, so b is 5 halves. The equation of our tangent line is y equals negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. All right, great. There's a graph of it for you. The function in blue, the tangent line in red at the point, of course, where x is equal to 1 and uh, y is equal to 2 at that point. The slope of that tangent line is negative 1 half. And the equation of that tangent line, negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. All right, great. So then now, stay at that same point, And now we're going to move to a different line. It's called the normal line. The normal line to a curve at a point is the... It goes through the point, and it is a line that is perpendicular to the tangent line. Normal is perpendicular to the tangent line. And so we have the same function, the same point. We know the tangent line is equation. We know its slope. We want the normal line it's equation, which starts with finding its slope. Not by using the definition of the derivative again or doing all that. We know that we know by, we don't we don't even have to use a shortcut. We know the equation of the line that is orthogonal or, or perpendicular to it. Um, the the slope of it is negative one half. What's the relationship between lines that are perpendicular as far as their slopes go? They have to be um, reciprocal, opposite reciprocals of each other. If this guy, tangent line slope is negative one half, then the normal line slope being or, or perpendicular to that is opposite and reciprocal to it. Uh, negative one half, opposite and reciprocal to that would be positive two. Okay, opposite reciprocal slopes. So our normal line slope is two. Uh, same point, x is one and y is two. Uh, and now m is two. So it turns out that b is zero. Believe it or not, this line goes through the origin with a slope of 2. y equals 2x is its equation. And here's the graph of all three together. Great job. Good work. Not that bad, right? And so, next equation. Uh, next example. Uh, no equations, just a graph. I have a graph of f and a graph of g. And I'm going to make a quotient of these two functions, f over g. Okay. And I'm asked to find the derivative of that quotient function. Q is the quotient function. I need to find the derivative of the quotient function. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to set up the quotient rule. Okay, we're going to take the derivative of the top. I'm sorry. Um, take this bottom and square it. Bring the bottom up to the top. Take the derivative of the top. Multiply it by that bottom. And then subtract the top times the derivative of the bottom. So straight execution of the quotient rule. And we're asked to, um, we're interested in x is equal to 7. So we just plug a 7 in every place we see an x. 
okay? But how are we going to get these values without the actual formulas? How can we look at a graph and know these values? Okay, first up, let's look at the function at 7, f at 7. So these are 1 by 1 squares. So we go over to 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the last vertical line there before the end. And we see where the function f, uh, the y value there, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, a uh, five. Okay, great. So when we see f of seven, we can replace it with a five. Not bad. How about g of seven? Same thing. Go over seven and go up uh, one. So one. That's the y value. When we see g of seven, which appears twice there, we're gonna put a one there. Denominator is a one. That's 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 nice. Okay. How about f prime of seven? It's a little more difficult. We can do it though. So. To read the derivative, looking at the graph, what's nice about it, at, at least at 7, is that we have the, the function is linear. And we know that the line and the tangent line match up. So if we can ascertain what the slope of that line is, we can then say that's the slope of the tangent line. How can you look at a line and know its slope? It's about the rise over the run. If you could find two corners that it goes through, two, you know, of the, of the grid, two corners of the grid, you can say how much you've gone up and how much you've gone over. Okay. So we can make a little triangle and say that we've gone up one and we've gone over four. So what's the slope? One fourth. All right, great. That's at x equal seven. Okay. Now g prime, same thing, linear. At 7, drawing a triangle, two corners. This time, you're falling instead of rising. You're going down 2, but you're going over 3. So negative 2 thirds. And just plug everybody in there. A fourth times 1, 5 times negative 2 thirds with a minus in between them, all divided by 1 squared. A little fraction arithmetic, nothing, nothing big here. Uh, 4 plus 10 thirds, uh, 1 fourth plus 10 thirds. Okay, so we go to 12s, and we have uh, three of them plus 40 of them. 43 twelfths, that's the answer. Okay. All right, great. Let's see another one of these. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing good. So next question is, um, we have a cubic. And the question is, um, find the points on the curve that have the tangent line being horizontal. It's going to be very important to us later. Um, Sorry, you can't see the horizontal. I am in the way. There we go. Okay, great. So what does that mean? If we try to find the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, and horizontal lines have, have zero slope. Okay, so we're going to find the e expression for the derivative and set it equal to zero. Okay, and we'll just use... The, the sum and difference and the power and the constant multiple rule, we'll be able to read through very quickly what the derivative is in no time flat. 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. That's what the derivative is. Okay, our job, find the x values where this guy is equal to 0. Normally we have some x to plug in. We can figure out the derivative. Well, now we want the derivative to be 0. we got to go figure out what the x is. This is a Jeopardy question. Okay. Our response is the x value. All right, so it's a quadratic. It's nice about it. We could factor out the six and uh, have a nice quadratic to factor. It factors nicely for us, thankfully. Go with x plus two x minus one. Divide by the six. That's not going to be zero. Either the x is going to be a negative two or the x is going to be a one. Two places where this function has a zero sloping tangent line. Okay. And we're asked for points on the curve, unfortunately, so we got a little bit of a grind to do. When x is negative 2, we go plug it in, and we can figure out the y value. 2 times a negative 8, 3 times a 4, minus 12 times a negative 2 plus a 1. We'll grind that out, and we'll figure out that that ends up as a 21. So there's one point, negative 2, 21. Okay, great. And we plug a 1 in, it's going to be easier. Just add up the coefficients. We get 5 minus 12 plus a 1. So that's going to end up being negative 6. 
So when x is 1, y is negative 6. At these two points, your tangent line should be horizontal. What are we going to do? Just look at a graph. And yes, it is. Okay. All right, great. Let's go ahead and stop here. Uh, this video is past 10 minutes already. Uh, my name is Nakai Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Uh, please comment down below, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching.